November 20th, just three months after Hitler invades the Soviet Union, the Grand Mufti Amin al-Husseini is in Berlin, safe from British pursuit. He is welcomed to the Nazi capital by the German foreign minister, von Ribbentrop. The Mufti failed in Iraq, but he is convinced that a Nazi victory in the war will, in the end, give him everything he wants. Once again, he asks von Ribbentrop for German promises to support Arab independence. He insists that the Jews of the Middle East are part of a world conspiracy and makes it clear that he fully supports their complete annihilation. He asks von Ribbentrop for face time with Adolf Hitler. Von Ribbentrop is impressed. He agrees that the Mufti should meet Hitler in person. The Grand Mufti wanted Hitler to promise an Arab national state in the Middle East, in the ancient lands of, uh, is of Islam. And that's exactly what Hitler was willing to offer them, either quietly or openly, depending upon the nature of the context. Eight days after he is greeted in Berlin by von Ribbentrop, the Grand Mufti has his long sought after meeting with Adolf Hitler. Hitler explained to him that he would ask every people in the Middle East to deal with their Jews and to solve the Jewish problem. And it was clear what he meant. He meant to organize another Holocaust in the Middle East. With Hitler's blessing, the Grand Mufti is introduced to the chief of the SS, Heinrich Himmler. Himmler, his subordinate Adolf Eichmann, and Al Husseini become close friends. Himmler gives the Mufti the rank of Gruppenführer in the SS, the equivalent of general, and gives Amin and his followers a generous monthly allowance to set up an Arab bureau in Berlin. The Mufti was everywhere in Germany during World War II. He was parading up and down the street. He was making official visits. He was making embassy visits. He was on uh, Radio Berlin uh, nightly. Himmler puts the Mufti in charge of all Arabic broadcasting from Berlin. Over the airwaves, Al Husseini repeatedly calls for another Arab uprising against the British. He also rails against the Jews, inciting Arabs to, quote, kill the Jews wherever you find them. In all of his speeches afterwards, he would always explain there are three big enemies, the British, the Americans, and the Jews. He would depict America as a, the big enemy of the Arabs. The Mufti hated Jews, he hated Zionism. His goal was to destroy the Jews, kill them, before they were allowed to immigrate. In 1943, the Grand Mufti learns of plans by Hungary, Romania, and Bulgaria, countries allied to Germany, to let thousands of Jews leave for the safety of Palestine. Through his influence with Himmler and von Ribbentrop, the Mufti immediately has the programs canceled. Among the planned emigrants are 4,000 children. Their fate in Nazi-controlled Europe is almost certain death. In the last four years of war, Germany has suffered enormous casualties on the battlefield. The Reich is desperate for fighting men. Heinrich Himmler begins recruiting Muslims from the Balkans with the enthusiastic help of the Grand Mufti, Amin al-Husseini. The Mufti helps raise the Bosnian Muslim 13th SS Division Hansjar, along with other units of what the Mufti calls his Arab Legion. Altogether, the Grand Mufti helps recruit 30,000 men for the Nazi war machine. Ironically, in Nazi racial theory, Arabs are seen as inferior racial stock, 
and not eligible for SS membership. Himmler treats foreign SS units with contempt as second-class citizens. But after an extensive physical exam for the Mufti, he makes an exception. For this, he has Hitler's approval. The personal physician of the Grand Mufti evaluated the Grand Mufti, and he said uh, he is not an Arab. He's a, he's a Caucasian, almost an Aryan. So we can expect that he will be a really reliable ally for us. The SS division Hansjar is deployed hunting down underground resistors in Yugoslavia and acts as an internal security force in Hungary. The division is responsible for a series of atrocities against partisans and Jews. In April 1945, as Allied troops fight their way through Germany in the last battles of the war in Europe, the story of the Mufti's Muslim regiments takes one final twist. As the cataclysmic battle for Berlin rages around Hitler's bunker, among the Nazi troops making their last suicidal stand are 100 men of the Mufti's Arab Legion. With the Allied victory, the war is over. But the influence of Nazi Germany on the Middle East is far from over. In Iraq, the Grand Mufti's legacy will fan the flames of a new and potent force, one that will mold a young Arab nationalist into a cunning and brutal dictator.